Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And here, you, you would have heard me in the last few days going on and on and on about this assembly, and it's finally the time. No more promotion. The time has finally arrived. Here we are, the assembly of the New Age Grio. And we have all our presenters here ready and willing to share with you. This is such an exciting time for us here in the Caribbean and across the world. In this season of COVID, when we think of so many negative things, here are some positive things that have come out of it where we can gather from around the world and have a conversation about things that affect each and every one of us and how we can move forward and make it so much, so much more an enjoyable experience being in the tourist industry and being a tourist guide. So today we have the honor of having representatives from the World Federation Tourist Guides Association. We have with us, I told you about her, and here you are to see her in person, our president, Alushka Ritchie. Hi, Alushka. Hello, Debra. Then we have Viola Lewis, our head of training. Remember I told you how she's oozing training? Well, here you get to see her now and see what someone who oozes training looks like. <laughs> Hi, Viola, welcome. Hi, yeah, I love you to see you all. Yes, thank you. <laughs> then we have Mark Cardonato, the powerhouse, the global ambassador. You couldn't find a better global ambassador than Mark Carr. She is definitely out there working very, very hard, and I can't wait for all of you to actually get to meet her as we go through this session. I would say a bit more about Mark Carr a bit later in the session. Then we have from the region, we have from Jamaica, Belinda Sutherland Doyle. Hi, Belinda. Hi, or should I say Wagwan? Yes, <laughs> all right. <laughs> then we have from Trinidad and Tobago, Wendell Griffith. Hi. Hi, Wendell. I'm sorry, I now realize that I should have requested that you have a steel pan or some calypso. On ah. <laughs> I just thought of it. So for next time, you make sure we see next something time. that gives some rhythm. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Then we have from Barbados, Madge Darwimple. Hi, everybody. Presenting. Hi. Hi. And then finally, in terms of our presenters, we have Victor Cook, the name that I heard from the time I entered this profession officially all I keep hearing was Victor Cook, Victor Cook. So that means he's going to be bringing lots and lots of information to us from the beautiful island of Barbados. Right, Victor? Beautiful. Greetings and salutations from Barbados. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. And welcome to the rest of you who have joined us this morning. We are looking forward to your interaction. Please feel free to, to put your questions in the chat box while we go through the sessions and the presentations as we go along. And then at the end, we're going to have an actual interaction uh, in terms of your questions, anything else that comes up. Now we're going to also have a poll. Uh, uh, we launched the poll for those of you who just joined us. Okay, this is so you can just you can just go into the poll, just click on the poll. So that you can, are you seeing the poll, all those who have just entered? Are you seeing the poll? Because it says if I relaunched it, I will lose my information. Are you seeing it, Mistral, Ricky? No. Rocio? No, I don't see it. I, okay. I see, yes. Hi, everyone. Okay, you've seen it? No, I'm not seeing it. Okay, I'll send it again as we go through the, the morning. As you know, when you're coming to technology, there are many things that don't quite work as you would expect it to. So, we, sure. so that we don't lose too much time, however, in our presentation, while I work on the back end with the technology, I would just like to, us to start off by having our president address us as she gives us a bit of information on what the World Federation of Tourist Guides Association is doing for the region for the world, how it can benefit us, how we can become members if we are not already members, either individual or as an association. So Alushka, it's over to you. 
Thank you, Deborah. Um, firstly, let me say on behalf of the World Federation, um, thank you for taking the initiative to do this session. I think the tourist guides and the tourism sector attending this and listening to this will find the information shared quite useful and I look forward to the discussions a little later on. Um, as, a, as a WFTJA family, we're always grateful to be included in such a opportunities and um, I'm grateful as well so great to see all of you here as well as some of our members um, so just to give you a little overview of who we are because there are some new people in the in the audience um, we are an international association made up of national associations individual members and affiliate members uh, we currently have members in approximately 90 countries. And of course, we are there to promote the profession of the tourist guides. We have an executive board, we have brand ambassadors, we have area representatives, and then we have the training division. So as you can imagine, I'm quite diverse and because we are international, things differ from country to country. Some countries don't have associations, some have legislation, some have certifications for tourist guides. So we, so we are quite varied in, in the needs of our members, um, depending on the country. We as WFTGA have adopted the European standards, which defines a tourist guide. So the definition speaks to the performance and the requirements of the tourist guide. We also encourage quite a high level of standard and Vahola will be speaking a little later as head of training and she'll also touch on standards as well. And then we also have our international convention. And this is an opportunity for the tourist guides from across the globe, both members and non-members, to gather and meet, attend lectures, workshops, learn more about the host city, and of course, the local culture. So this is always exciting because you never know everything. So it's always nice to learn something. And then the opportunity that the conventions also allow us is to attend to international association business. So if you are part of an association, you will understand that we have to attend to a general assembly where we have, an, have to appoint a new executive board. Um, some of the exciting destinations we have been to in the past include Prague, Tehran, Tbilisi and our next host will be Novi Sad in Serbia. So we're quite looking forward to that. And then, of course, it's always important to remember, you know, we are tourist guides and sometimes we are forgotten, but, you know, we pay a very important part in the value chain of tourism, um, in the economies of, of destinations of countries. And it's quite important that this be recognized when we're preparing for tourism in the future. You know, 2020 is being a, a challenging year for everyone and the, the role of us as the tourist guide has had to evolve into so much more than what we are used to. Um, you know, we're used to using our knowledge and our skills. We are the storytellers of the destination. We share information. But now we are, in the next few months, we're having to navigate other roles. Um, we're having to see that we are health and safety officers and ambassadors. We are destination ambassadors. Um, we as tourist guides are having to more so than ever use technology. Associations are having to use technology to communicate with the members. Um, we are now the conduits to sharing accurate and reliable health information. We are having to guide within the protocols of our cities and our, and our government legislations. So we have become so much more in the role that we are as tourist guides. And these challenges, we've never experienced it before. It's a, it's a learning curve for everyone. And this is also where your association plays a role. You know, as a sector, we have to work together, we have to stand together and we have to support each other in tourism. And this is one of our big objectives as the World Federation is to promote the profession. And this is important and it's done in different ways from country to country. Tourism is quite a dynamic sector and our role within this is important and as an international organization we have had to readdress how we communicate with our tourist guide members in different countries. We have had to reassess this year 2020 our membership model, our benefits, the way we communicate and our general strategy, our general decision making, our convention program all of this is, as an association, the responsibility that, that is taken onto us. 
going into 2020 earlier this year, we focused on creating a larger sense of community with our members and our tourist guides globally and um, building our WFTGA family. Our area representatives have played a crucial role with this and this is with communications, support to our members and to tourist guides across the globe. So their role is quite crucial and Marika, I believe, will touch on, on the area representatives a little later on. As an organization, we're also quite focused on delivering and communicating more effectively, virtually and digitally. Um, we're also using this as a way to advocate more for the profession as well. And it's important to remember that being part of an international organization speaks to your credibility as a local association. We are recognized and consulted on many occasions. We have been affiliate members with the UNWTO for many years. We work closely with them and UNESCO. We have partnered with a number of organizations as part of our drive to spread our footprint and to create opportunities for our members while advocating for the tourist guide sector. And a very exciting project that we have, it's been, in, it's been for many years, is that we have one day a year that allows us to celebrate our profession and to celebrate who we are as tourist guides. And that is International Tourist Guide Day, which is typically celebrated on the 21st of February. This day allows us to spread a unified message um, as tourist guides through using our local press, hosting members of the public, and generally sharing the passion that we have for our profession. And a lot of the, the members cannot celebrate on that day specifically and celebrate at different times of the year, and that's fine. The point is that we spread the message and we use this International Tourist Guide Day to showcase our, our passion, our passion for what we do as tourist guides. So setting up new associations and federations is something we fully support. It's important to have one voice when you communicate with the role players in your destination. It's actually crucial that you have this one voice. And we encourage everyone who are driving this kind of initiative to be visionary, to be inclusive, to be transformative. We also encourage tourist guides of the region to support this, be supportive, take part in the local activities, work together and create this unified voice. Associations can be truly representative of your needs when the correct governance and policies are in place. So it's important if you want to advance your sector, if you want to advance your skill, if you want to obtain the highest level of standards across the board, to all work together to make the association perform to speak to these needs. Our head of training, Viola, will explain more about the objectives of standards and the various aspects of the training we offer. But for now, we'll have a bit more of a conversation a little later around the setting up of an association, I believe. Um, but for now, that's all from my side and I will welcome any questions a little later when we get to the question and answer session. So thank you, Debra. Thank you as well. Yes, that, that was quite a bit there, a bit of a challenge for us as well to consider in the region, a bit of encouragement and support. So that was a well-rounded set of information given to us by our president. Um, the, kind of, the kind of encouragement that is needed, especially at a time like this. So we will go on swiftly to the point now of what training opportunities are there available for us and we turn our attention now to Viola. Thank you very much, Deborah. And uh, first of all, let me also thank you for having such a wonderfully inspiring title for our <laughs> gathering here, um, the New Age Griot, because really we tourist guides are, as Salushka said, the storytellers. In my culture, really, the Griot would be the bard, the Celtic bard. So we are, um, we are full of enthusiasm and we are full of passion, all those words have been said already. And I think enthusiasm plus training equals professionalism. So that's really where the training comes in and um, if a tourist guide association gives us the voice, and it does, it gives us the voice to speak, then training will give us the language. We speak in and we understand each other. So that's the kind of place where I see the training. And um, briefly, what is our training actually like? 
And I'm most of you are already involved in training. I see many familiar names on the screen today. So you know that tourist guide training has to be to a large extent practical. So the European standard Alushka mentioned that's called EN 15565. So this European standard um, actually stipulates demands that 40%, at least 40% of our training need to be practical. And then the knowledge, of course, is part and parcel of what we're doing as well, the stories and the, um, the culture, the, the language of the, of the culture and natural heritage of our area. So WSDG's training, we would not dream of telling people in Barbados um, the, or giving them the knowledge of their own <laughs> country and region. What we do is actually looking into the skills training. So WFDJ specializes in the skills training of how to uh, interpret our culture and natural heritage. So that's where the definition of the tourist guide really comes in as well, of how to really look after our visitor because we have a duty of care for our visitor. And that has become more and more important now in the time of the pandemic in terms of not only um, group control and positioning, but also the health protocols on which there was um, talking about. So, so many skills. And it's really about the, the skills training we bring to the uh, table, if you want. So how do we, um, or how can you access the training? There are a number of ways. One very popular way is in-house training. That would mean we would send a, a trainer. We have a training division of really of um, well, actually hundreds of trainers on different levels. And we would send a member of our training division to you to work with you and to translate really our training program into the three competencies. If you want, we will practically work on guiding on a walk, guiding in a site, and guiding on a moving vehicle. So look at those skills and then on site deliver this aspect of the, of the training. Yeah, in house, of course, at the moment, quite difficult to um, accomplish. So there's another um, point, a second way to access our training, which again has its challenges at the moment, I must admit, and that is our international training centers. So we have two international training centers, one in Cyprus, the other one in Armenia. And there um, we uh, usually have courses every year and we welcome tourist guides from all over the world to spend 14 days in the training center. First, we will look at skills as well. And there we actually concentrate on train the trainer courses because that's really how the knowledge can um, grow. And let me say one thing, you know, it's like planting plants as well. You put seeds into fertile ground and really a fertile ground for the tourist guide profession is a tourist guide association. So, you know, we found actually find training is most successful there that we have a tourist guide association because then the environment is given. Yeah, but returning to in-house training, in-house training, as I said, originally is really very useful when there already is a group of tourist guides in the region and the trainer comes to you. If a country is starting up, you might consider sending one or two people to Cyprus or to Armenia to look at um, or to, to uh, take part in the courses. And then really in the longer term, uh, also for some it might already be possible now, number three in terms of accessing the training is actually letting, allowing WFTJ to look at your current training program you already have and see how it compares to this um, European standard of professional training programs. So we would look at the, yes, the knowledge, at the skills, we would advise of how to fill any gaps um, that might be there. And then we would actually, when we realize the program fits the criteria, the standards, we would accredit the course. And that would mean you could say in your marketing material, on your certificates and in your training material, this course has been accredited by WFDG. So that's just another very good way of working together. And of course, um, an accredited course also needs accredited trainers. So therefore, again, the um, qualification you gained earlier will really be very useful to cover the whole country with the appropriate high level standard training. And the last one, really, the last, um, maybe slightly well, more unusual way of accessing our training are the conventions. So because come to our conventions, maybe first of all, put the toe into the water 
and then there are workshops and lectures uh, are being run. You can already network with uh, other tourist guides, with trainers, and maybe build the whole project from there. So there are different ways of accessing the training. And it also, of course, depends on what is already there, what kind of support you wish and you need at the moment. But we try to really adapt to the local circumstances. And you notice, last thing I'm going to say is we have training centers in Cyprus and Armenia. We would love to have more regional training centers to be closer to our um, partners and our uh, trainers and tourist guides of the future everywhere, globally in the world. So briefly, in a, in a nutshell, in-house training, international training centers, accreditation of courses, and maybe start by coming to our conventions. These are the ways to access our training. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. I immediately have taken away that the Caribbean will be one of those international training centers. Okay, I'm speaking it into existence and I, so I am sure that the rest of us that are on are in support of that. Thank you so much, Viola, for that information. Uh, there was so much there to, to let us see that there, the there are no barriers that we can really make this happen without much effort. In a, you know, without much, yeah, without much effort, really. So I'm really looking forward to to this making, yeah, making all this here a reality. Moving quite along because we have lots to talk about this morning, we get to Maricar Donato, our global ambassador, and it's at this time I will tell you. When I came into tour guiding in 2017, I went to training. I started, I got involved with some Facebook groups and this Maricar keeps popping up all over the place. All everywhere I go, there's this Maricar popping up and everyone is talking about Maricar this and Maricar that. And then I go to the convention in Las Vegas in 2018, the International Association of Tour Guides, um, Directors and Guides. And there I see Miss Maricar coming in and I was like, Oh, okay. This is <laughs> it's my car. And she is like, oh, anyone who sees her would understand what I mean when I say that. But she just comes in and she commands the, the respect and authority and everything else. And then um, I don't even remember how we got to be talking, but I remember in my first conversation, it was as though it was this is your this is your name this is where you're from okay this is what you have to do okay on behalf of the world federation of tour guides this is what you have to do the, 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 and i got my marching orders right there and then <laughs> from her and she has right. not let me go <laughs> since then i saw her again in orlando last year and I, she didn't forget deborah what's happening what's happening so i didn't want 2020's convention to come and have to face my car again <laughs> without having done what i was supposed to do the thing is we're getting it done but there's going to be no phys physical uh, convention to attend but at least i'm happy my car is is your great support your great encourager um i you, all the accolades and respect that you get you certainly deserve because you really do work hard at making making tourists the tourist industry and tourist guide, you know, so amazing. So I, that's my introduction of you. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to make sure I did yours like that because of really and truly you have brought us to this point and, and that is very, very critical. So Marika, over to you, Global Bar um, Brand Ambassador. Thank you very much. So big applause to Deborah for actually uh, you know, bringing this to life and bring it into reality and action. That's what we need in today's world, in the virtual world. So greetings, everyone. Um, good day to all of you in the region and around the world. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this um, webinar. Uh, Mary Cardonato from Washington, D.C. and Global Brand Ambassador and Area Rep um, Coordinator for the uh, Federation of Tour Guides of the World Federation of uh, International Tour Guides. I want to uh, start off by saying that is the role of an ambassador, a goodwill ambassador is really connection and, and just <clears throat> connecting hands of friendship. Look at the logo behind me. These are the, the logo of the Federation, you know, connecting, joining, interacting with people all across the globe. 
tourist guides across the, the globe. That is our message. And we are here to help one another, especially now in these times of crisis. And um, as area representative, I am in charge of 13 area representatives, uh, two of whom are in this uh, forum this uh, today. And uh, we have six regions across the globe. And one of them is the Americas, uh, North, South, Central America. And we have also put the Caribbean region into this category. Another one is Africa. Another one is Asia Pacific and Oceania and Europe and uh, uh, the Middle East. So all of these are different regions around the globe. And we always have like different uh, representatives to be the voice, be the face, be the hands-on of, of the Federation. And we're all volunteers, number one. Okay, just understand this is a volunteer job. And half of us, you know, are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's really incredible how much time and effort and service we give so that, you know, to contribute to make this a better world. It's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people. I mean, I never knew how many friends I had globally because of this outreach. And it really helps. It's so good to, to be strengthened by different colleagues around the world. So I invite you all, ask questions, become members, become active uh, participants, uh, join us in the training, join us in conferences. Now we will do a lot more of virtual virtual connections and this is the beginning of many many more you know sessions to come so thank you for hosting us deborah and perhaps we can hear our other speakers also to tell us about what they're doing in the region I didn't, I didn't remember to unmute myself. Sorry. <laughs> here we are. We'll go straight into the region. Thank you so much, Marka. We go straight to Jamaica. Jamaica has been on here welcoming everyone to Jamaica. So here you get an opportunity to let us know exactly what is happening in Jamaica in terms of association, in terms of training, and pretty much making sure that we stay within our time frame because we know Caribbean people, we can talk. A tour guys we can talk so that combination you know <laughs> so off to you belinda okay. good morning everyone well welcome to jamaica or should i say wagwan 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 okay wagwan wagwan i'm here to share with you um today my country's passion for the field of tour guiding I'm sure you are aware that Jamaica has many, many, many visitors. I think in the English speaking Caribbean, we have the most visitors per year. Now with this in mind, my dream is to be a part of an association that con can contribute to the development of this industry. What are we doing? Currently, our we, we have embarked by, in mandi in, by um, delivering mandatory training. Now to be a tour guide, you would have to be a part of, of the um, tourism industry. So to be a tour guide, we have said, well, you need to do our tour guide training. Now TPDCO is the government regulatory agency that is responsible for um, enhancing and developing the tourism industry. Training is a large part of TPDCO, and that is why we feel now that it would be necessary for, in order to provide that knowledge, that underpinning knowledge um, that people would require to be, you know, an international tour guide. So what we do is we offer tour guide training. But prior to this, we say, you do our Team Jamaica training first, and then you do our tour guide training. So I can say, well, we're embarking in training, and I think that will contribute to the development of this industry. Also, um, we have another, our national training agency, which is HART. There's also a tour guide training program there, 
for persons who are desirous of being tour guide. I must say that there's much more to be desired in terms of development because we all want to be a part of this, this we want a part of this pie in Jamaica based on the fact that we have so many visitors um, coming to Jamaica. We have so much to share. We have our rich culture. We have our dialect, our flora, our fauna. We have so much. So we feel that it is very necessary for us to develop people who can deliver in this area, in this tour guide area. You want to know what our vision is? Well, let me share a little of our vision with you. We would like in Jamaica to develop a register of certified tour guide. And we can only do this through an association. Right now, we do not have a register. So we would like to develop a register of, as, of certified tour guides so that we can um, build to the network, build and enhance the network. We also would like the WFTGA to assist us in implementing the adequate um, courses that we feel are necessary for the development of a tour guide. So that is where we, we, we would be relying on the w, WFTG for support. Um, we, like, we would like to encourage synergies through this um, international training in order to um, build our tour guide um, association within the region. We want to encourage network we want to facilitate the exchange of language, exchange of culture right across the Caribbean. So we want to encourage that, you know, a synergy within the, not just internationally, but within the Caribbean itself. And we want to promote the roles of tour guide um, as it relates to, you know, a functional area. We also, um, we want to establish an environment that will matriculate into the continuous growth and the continuous development for its members. And this ultimately, we are hoping will transfer into marketability, um, earning potential for everyone, because we know, you know that um, earning is very, earnings are, are very important. And we want to have a sustainability for all the tour guides that we have in Jamaica. We also want to facilitate the development of the career, and we want to recognize viable and, you know, scholastic rewards uh, within the region, within and across the region. And um, we think that this can only be done if we have a National Tour Guide Association. So we are expecting great things. WFTGA. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Belinda. You've certainly set out your intentions there. Yeah, you certainly set, set you. out You're your welcome. intentions there. And that is that is great. And um, that's what we want. We want everyone to know exactly what our desires are and then go after them. Um, yes. I'm already seeing, please put in the chat the fact that we have to put together an action plan. So you've already started some information. <laughs> Let's hear what Wendell from Thank Trinidad, you. what they're doing now in Trinidad, because they have an association. Wendell has been privileged to be the, the president of that association for quite a while. So he comes to us with lots of information to share. Wendell? Hi, everyone. Uh, maybe I should take all these glasses because um, I'm getting a reflection. I, I think you all are getting the same reflection of the tulips in my glasses. Yes? No, it's okay. Oh, we're good. Fine. Go ahead. You're good. Okay, great. Okay, so hi, everyone. I, I know you're seeing the name Kester uh, at the bottom of my picture there, but I am not Kester. I'm using Kester's uh, um, PC. <laughs> but I'm Wendell. I'm Wendell Griffiths from Trinidad. And uh, my, my Jamaican counterpart say, Wagwan. Uh, in Trinidad, wow. we say, Wapn, Wapnin, you know? <laughs> That's how we say it in Trinidad, Wapnin. What? You know? What's happening? In what? other words, what is happening? What's happening? What's happening? We don't say what's happening, we say, Wapnin. 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 <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, 
So welcome to Trinidad, everyone. Uh, in Trinidad, we do have a TOGAD association. We've had an, an association since 1998, uh, of which I was no part of back then. Uh, I did not even know that we had tour guides in Trinidad back then, you know. Um, in Trinidad, tourism isn't really on the front burner of any government that has run this, this country. It has never been. Uh, we who, in, who are in the tourism sector, we are the ones who is really pushing uh, tourism here in Trinidad. Um, today, with this government that we have now in power, they, they are saying that, well, you know, it's Trinidad and Tobago, one country, two islands. They're saying Tobago is actually for leisure tourism. Trinidad is for business. I must say uh, right here, right now, that is far from the truth. The fact is that we have a lot to offer here in terms of, of hiking, uh, waterfalls, many waterfalls, um, beautiful trails, and lots and lots of historical places to visit. Okay? Um, we in the tourism industry, we are the ones who are really pushing all of this. Uh, the fact is that um, we had the hotel, the hotel um, association, the hotels association, they are the ones who uh, developed the school and they did the tour guide training, but it was not accredited. And uh, we, most of us, um, right up to 2000, we are in 2020, so right up to 2018, right up to 2018, we had tour guides, certified tour guides, without an accredited um, institution. It was not from an accredited institution, okay? Um, I, finding that out, of course, I did not know that, that the TTHTI, which is the hotel school, uh, we did not know that, that the, it was not accredited. And so I approached a government institution. Uh, it's called COSTAT, C-O-S-T-A, or T-T-A-T. Right, which is the um, let, let me let me get this right. Um, it is the Institution of Science and Technology. Yeah, it's the Institution of Science and Technology and Technology here in Trinidad. Okay, um, it's a government institution. I went to them and I got them to uh, agree with me to do the course. Now I also introduced to them. Uh, one of the best trainers we have in Trinidad. She has written a book called The Cicerone. Uh, her name is Catherine McConney. And uh, she, I know she is the best we have uh, maybe in the region, as far as I know. Um, but she is so good that I had to introduce her as a trainer to Costat. Um, since 2018, the program got going, they, they set the, the institution, they set up a whole program, tour guiding training program, and uh, with, um, with, with options of, of even going further into tourism, um, getting your, your master's, your doctorate, and all of that kind of stuff. All right? Uh, you have those options. Uh, so the thing is that um, in Trinidad here, we do have certified guides, and to operate as a tour guide in Trinidad, you must have a uh, certification. Uh, in that certification, you must have first aid, you are a first responder. Um, also, after receiving those things, you have to go to the courts. You must go to the courts to get uh, a magistrate's license to operate as a tour guide in Trinidad and Tobago. Without a magistrate's license, you will not be doing tour guiding legally. And, and of course, there's a lot of that going on. Okay, so the fact is that, um, and also I must mention that the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau of Standards, they have set standards for all stakeholders in the tourism industry. So there are international best practice standards that we have to follow, okay? Um, in that, they, they, in the, that, we call it the TTIC um, certification. You um, have to present your uh, first aid kit, uh, make sure that everything in, in there is, is um, 
it's not, nothing is expired uh, and that you have every single thing that you would need for tour guiding out there. Um, in first aid though, we, we, there are different um, levels of first aid that we do, different levels. Uh, the highest level is uh, wilderness training, right? Wilderness training, that, that's the highest level. And um, uh, that is, I have done both. And I can tell you, I would prefer, honestly, I would prefer all tour guides to do wilderness first aid training. It's the best training that you will get. I think you, you will be more than a first responder, you know? Um, so these are the standards uh, that we have to, to uh, live by or, or, or have to get uh, all these certifications to really operate legally as a tour guide here in Trinidad. Um, what I would like to see, as I mentioned to Deborah some time ago, is that um, I would li like to see uh, associations in the region come together and also be part of, we all must be part of the WFTGA. Uh, I would love that. I would love that. Uh, it's the first time. Uh, I'm a new face to everyone here, I'm sure. And um, it's the first time um, I am meeting you all. I've heard of the World Federation of, of Tour Guides but Association, but um, I've never met anyone. So thank you, Deborah, for having, uh, bringing me into this, you know, having me meet all these people. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really happy. And I would really like to see um, us getting together. I know, um, joining into one world or association. The world is a village, isn't it? Yes. The world is a village. Look at the pandemic that's going on now. The world is a village. Yes. We are a village, you know? So the fact is that, that uh, <laughs> uh, let's get together as, as one association, um, uh, as associations under one world association. I would really love for that to happen. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Wendell. Yes, that would be great. Um, already from what you've presented, there's so much you have done right there next door to us and we are not so much aware of it and you are not aware of what's happening in the rest of it. So if we start talking to each other, just imagine how much stronger we will be as a region. Yes. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. So we come now on home to the host country. The host country, Barbados. Barbados is now going to be presenting. We will start with our tour guide, Victor, who, as I said in the beginning, had tour guiding and Victor's name always come up together. So we are going to have Victor start us off as he presents what's happening in Barbados as a tour guide, as well as what his interaction has been or his benefits of being aware and being part of World Federation Tourist Guide Association as he's been an individual member for a few years now. Victor, it's over to you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, in Barbados, well, we are not as organized as they are in Trinidad. We have made attempts about five, six years ago to start a, a tour guide association, but uh, it has not come into fruition as yet. So, but the, 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 the struggle, I suppose, continues. So in Barbados's case, we are now working up to a position where, uh, and Madge will perhaps touch on this, in terms of getting certification, either MVQ or CVQ, Caribbean Vocational uh, Qualification, and uh, for tour guiding, which is a region-wide uh, qualification. And I've been involved in some training where that is concerned because it's, a, it's about 12 modules and like how Trinidad has implemented and included in their training uh, first aid, that is also part of, of the training here in Barbados as well. The, so we can operate in Barbados presently without any license from government or any other uh, overarching body per se. And uh, so that in, in and of itself, as you probably know quite well, 
presents its own challenges in terms of the, the, the standards, in terms of presentation, uh, certainly in, in with respect to information as well. The reason why, well, how I got into, involved in WFTGA is because back in 2010, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, along with the Ministry of Tourism of Barbados, uh, were looking at improving the standards because they recognize, well, look, this is what is happening. This is what we need. This is where we need to go. And so they sponsored uh, a training program of trained trainers where a, a WFTGA international trainer, Iris Barry, she came in 2010 and we went through this two week program, very intensive to bring us up to international standard with respect to training tour guides. So we have been making inroads where that is concerned and we continue. We are also upgrading ourselves. Iris came back since Barbados became, uh, well, not Barbados, but Bridgetown and its garrison became a, a world uh, federation, not sorry, What's the, what's the word again now? A UNESCO World Heritage Site, UNESCO, yes. Right, yeah. Right. And uh, in 2011, and Iris came back to offer some training specifically for the World Heritage Site of Bridgetown and its garrison. So it was some of the original uh, participants from 2010, as well as some new persons. Uh, that came into that also. Persons who were already doing uh, guided walks in the heritage area that is now Bridgetown and, uh, and its garrison. So training is coming. Some has come, uh, I might well perhaps touch on that as well. We started in 2017 with a group of very interested persons. And we are hopefully seeking to have them certified at the Caribbean or local level, um, because through the TVET Council of Barbados, which provides the oversight where that is concerned. Uh, trend, the tour guiding business in Barbados, uh, as I suppose in other places, tour guides do not, well, many tour operators, I should say, do not have a full appreciation of what is involved in tour guiding and the, the kind of responsibility and the, the duty of care that is thrust upon a tour guide. And even now with this current situation of COVID-19, even that is an added dimension to it as well. And uh, that is one of the areas that as we get to the stage of having a Barbados Tour Guide Association, that we could perhaps then have a better representation when it comes to meeting and interfacing with all of those operations, whether it is attractions uh, here on Barbados, to bring them up to speed in terms of what is required for uh, a proper tour guide. And that is all I will say for now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Victor, <laughs> for that bit of information. It is certainly good to know so far that we are not starting at ground zero. We, we really do have a strong platform that we can build on in the various areas and the various territories. And that is great to know. 
I'm not going to take anything away from Madge coming up and as, as the last presenter. I know it's tough, but unfortunately, someone had to be last. <laughs> Sorry, Madge, but it turned out to be you, which could mean you get to do, a, you know, you get to benefit so much from what has been before. So now we will hear from Madge representing, and as Victor alluded to, she will probably give us a bit more of what the plans are and what has been done in terms of tour guiding and, and bringing, bringing that group of persons together. So Madge, it's over to you. Hey, good morning, everyone again. Okay, um, Victor, he did start the conversation for us. And I would just say he is correct in most aspects. We do not have, there's no qualification necessary to become a tour guide in Barbados. Most, most tour guides in Barbados are taxi drivers, persons who believe that they know Barbados well and anyone else who wants to do a tour for someone who's visiting or for locals. Um, tour companies, um, they would train, inverted commas, their employees and give them a script and they would carry out that script whether it is correct or not, but that's what they're given to, to do and they, and they do it. Um, so these persons have no prerequisites. They can, they can just come off the street basically and, um, and be a tour guide. But for us, obviously here at the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc, we would prefer if persons would have some knowledge of Barbados, some, some, some love for history even. And as, as everyone would know, they should be able to tell a story because it is, tour guiding is all about telling a story. So we would prefer if they can be um, great storytellers and be able to communicate as well. And um, that would be encapsulated in any training that we do. As Victor said, we would have had training from the WFTGA over the years. Victor was in the first match um, in 2010. I would have been in the match in 2014 when Iris Barry came down to Barbados. So we also would have been trained as um, trained trainers, trainer of trainers. And it was at that point that we talked about having a tourist um, guide association here in Barbados. That discussion happened um, in 2014 and went into 2015. So we did have a draft, uh, a draft document. I then I would have been working in the Ministry of Tourism at that time. So that's how I became involved in in the process. But um, since I moved on to the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., we have been involved with the TVET Council, the Training Vocational Education um, Board. And the training there is to qualify as a tour guide and have the NVQ or CVQ qualification. And we have had the first cohort um, trained thus far. Victor was involved in that process as a trainer. So that batch, has they have been trained um, so far and it's just a matter of being fully um, certified um, at this at this point, um, we do um, understand the importance of training and having an association because obviously we would want our sector in Barbados to be regularized as 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 well. We we would want to have those standards in place of which we have draft ones as well. And in this period of COVID, we've also um, drawn up protocols as it relates to tour guiding the do's and don'ts. Of, um, of tour guiding during this COVID um, pandemic. So we do have those as well. So they have been, I think I have been distributed because Victor and I, um, we, have, we have been involved in, in commenting on the draft standards. So we, we do have those out there. So we, as I said, we do understand the importance of, of having um, something such as a, an association, which we, we do want to have one because we, think that um, it, would, it would lend itself to persons um, being more, as I said, it's all about standards. So everybody would be on the same page and they would know what they have to do and not have to guess as to what they're, what, what they're doing. And um, that, I think that's it in a nutshell because it just started the conversation. I just filled in, filled in some of the blanks. So I don't see any disadvantage to having persons trained, they're not, they're not, I don't see any disadvantages to, to having training done um, at a local level, regional or international, and 
what I found interesting would be that if you have a training program that it could be accredited um, with the WFTJ as well, we, that, that would be great because we have no problem either being trained um, through the TVET and have a CVQ qualification or having an accreditation from the WFTGA. I think it would be great if our program could be accredited through the WFTG as well. So um, that's in the nutshell and I'm open to any questions from, from anyone really, so. Okay, great, thank you. Um, again, it's really showing up that we are way, way ahead, way ahead of where we probably thought we were. Because based on what you have shared, um, Matt, is pretty much that there's already, or Victor had mentioned, there's already a regional certification that we just need to probably just sign up to FTGA, let them have a look at it. Maybe there are things they can take from what we have to strengthen their yes. protocols yes. and I, the yes, other way as well. You know, exactly. So, and, Pardon? Yeah, having, having gone through both of the programs, um, they can be cross-referenced and um, yeah, I'm sure they can, ours can stand up to, to the other and the other one can, we can borrow from, from each other. So it would be great if they can have a look at what we do and, and we can have that accreditation on any certificate that we issue as well. That would, that would be perfect because then we are at the regional level and obviously WFTGA is at the world level. So I'm sure that actually, have, having looked at both of them and having been through both programs, I can see that they would be very complementary. So right. I'm sure um, it would be it would not be a problem to have our program accredited with DW. I, I'm, I'm confident, really, that it can that that, that, it, can, <laughs> that it can work. And you, Deborah, would have would know a bit about it because Jillian would have been part of my first um, cohort. Okay. And right, yeah, right. So yeah. it has it has lots of great um, programs. We all realize communication is is is, is compulsory in both yes. of them. Yes. So and and we do and and so to say we did have to do the um, first aid and and stuff like that. So it it always is a pretty comprehensive program. So I'm sure when the the powers that be with the WFTGA have a look at it, they they yeah, I'm sure I'm confident. Good. Yes, that's yeah. wonderful. That is wonderful. I think between the three islands that have been showcased today, we have enough information that we can certainly start putting our working groups together to come together with a comprehensive move forward. Um, one of our one of our participants, Ricky, wants to. He has to sh um, jump off in a few moments, but he wants to come in and have the opportunity to greet the gathering. Hi, Ricky. You can unmute yourself, introduce yourself sure. to us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I have to leave in a couple of minutes because I have to go back to work. And I'm currently living in, um, uh, in New York City. So here is very crazy at the moment. Uh, introducing myself. First, I want to say that every single word you said about Mari Carr is so, so true. She's a star. She's like, you know, no words for her. She's amazing. She's just a, a breathtaking. Uh, my name is Ricky Ricardo, but you, you, all of you guys can call me Ricky. Uh, I'm a member of the World Federation since 2018. And since September last year, Mari Carr, uh, and I became, uh, together with Patricia, uh, uh, a representative for Latin and Central America. Okay. So basically, uh, that is my, and together with my region, all the beautiful islands of the Caribbean are there. And this is okay. what a beautiful place because uh, we know, I know that I would say half of all your guys in coming, coming, coming to come through the tourism. So we, we know how you guys are feeling right now with all these pandemics going on. Because all basically eighty percent of all income come to the tourism, so it's affecting all of you really, really strong. But being part of that and knowing that uh, that area has, uh, as I said, the particular uh, area because you guys speak English, Spanish, French, you guys, you know, all those beautiful languages. And how can we make? Uh, how can we? Together with the Latin, because it's, so, it's such an, a huge area. You have the, all the countries that are Spanish speaker, and then you have all those beautiful islands that has diversity with 
three, four, five different languages. And I'm um, being part of the World Federation and listen to you guys. Uh, I kind of, I got to the point, I understood your message, Deborah, that uh, how can we make the Caribbean area even stronger than you guys already it is. And I felt the, the need of training, of certification, of uh, knowing what you guys are doing. You guys are, are happy people, are friendly. You have the customer service in your vein. That's amazing. But it's always important to get certificate, to get the papers. That helps a lot. Especially that, uh, especially you guys get a lot of cruise ship. Not at the moment, but you get a lot of cruise ship during the seasons. And then, and having the certificate, having the knowledge of what you guys are doing, what you guys are talking about, and explaining your area. That's, I'm sure, 100% sure that the World Federation can help a lot with that. My job being really down to earth and what I can offer right now today, July the 13th, to you and all of you guys are over there, it's getting in touch with you or the Caribbean representative person, putting you guys together in contact with Rosalba from Mexico, which is a really powerful, really strong woman who's doing a lot for the, Carib for the Latin America. Because if you see by the end of the day, the La Latin America and Caribbean all come together. So how can you guys work together as well? But being like, how can we make it the Caribbean first really strong? Because that's the main key of this meeting today. So how can you make the Caribbean even stronger? How can myself, together with Patricia, we share all those uh, beautiful countries and islands, how can we contribute to you? And, and I do see, I mean, why not in the future, very soon, having one of those islands or somewhere in, in, the, in, La, in, the, in the Central America hosting the, the trainers in the future? Instead of Cyprus is a beautiful island uh, and the other country as well, I, I just don't, I forgot the name. Yeah. But yeah, the, let's be honest, they are very yeah, far away yeah. of the Caribbean, of yeah, the so Central America. Yeah. So, so why not having one, one of those islands? I yes. wouldn't say the island, but one of those countries. Let's say, for instance, Costa Rica is very keen on to host. So why not having one of those countries that is close by, is like three hours flight or four hours flight instead of 20 hours? Why not having one of those countries hosting? We would love to have one of the Caribbean islands, but we can have another country around the Central America as well. Yes. Yeah. So this is one of the most important things. I think we, myself, as a member of the World Federation, I can help with that. With, I can, you know, uh, talk and, and, yeah. and making everything happening because yeah. it's, it's important to talk. That's very important. So, and then, but okay, it's time for action. Yes. And I'm here to offer my action, you know? You. And I, I don't see a problem in the future. Why not to become one of those trainers and travel around the Caribbean, the Central America, uh, uh, Latin America, and, and provide those trainers as well. It's yes. something that we can talk about. We can discuss in, in, the, in the short period of time. Yes. But yes. that was my introduction. I just want to introduce myself, get to know you guys. It's, it's a, it's, for me, it's a, it's a joy for me to get to know you guys through Marie Carr, uh, as we already spoke about her. And I would love to get, uh, maybe not waiting for the next meeting, but we can talk as soon as we finish this meeting today. We can, ex we can talk through uh, Messenger. We can, we can exchange WhatsApp number and, yes. and, and move forward. Yes, yes, all right. for sure. That's for sure. all from me. I'm sure that I, all the things that I'm kind of forgetting, but I will address Debra? you definitely for yes, sure. Yes, please. So, someone has just said Deborah. Sorry. Alushka. Alushka. Yes, please. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, that was me. Just to touch on Ricky's point. Yes. Uh, as Ricky mentioned, um, Costa Rica. Also, just to let everyone know, um, we put a call out to destinations to possibly host our 2020 interim conference, and Costa Rica were very high up on that list. 
Unfortunately, COVID hit and that likelihood of it taking place this year did not happen. But it is definitely on the top of our minds as an organization to move forward with this interim conference, but we will have to relook at it from next year. Um, as 2020, we are just um, not looking at hosting any kind of event um, as we are taking the safety of the participants into consideration right now. But Costa Rica definitely top of mind for future host for an interim conference. And that would be a smaller version of our bigger con convention. Okay, thank you so much okay. for that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm so excited about all the possibilities that are coming out of this meeting. And as Ricky said, yes, we need to get going right away. So for those of you who are here, just drop in the chat box your name and contact information. I've put my email address in there, chatbarbados at gmail. Just send me your contact information so we can start putting that WhatsApp group together so we can start having our conversation and see how we can get things going. Okay, so Great. if you can just either email it to me or drop it in the chat. Yes, Ricky. Definitely. Thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you all of you guys Thank for you, your, Ricky. your time. Thank you. Thank I, you, I Ricky. You have a great day, day at work. Thank you, Ricky. All of you guys have a good one. Take care of yourself and be safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. you uh, before, Thanks, Ricky. Bye, Ricky. Before we go in for any further, I want to recognize the presence of Bernice. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He is joining us from Benin in the African continent. Again, through tourist associations, I met him online. And last year through the BTMI, I, I won my DNA testing kit. So Madge, because of that, that testing kit I won at the BTMI event, I sent my DNA off to discover that most of my ancestry came from Benin. And then I found Bernice, he was on another group in and he mentioned he's from Benin. So I reached out to him. So you see it, the synergies that go through here. And I must admit as well here that in speaking to Wendell, Wendell Griffith has Barbadian lineage and it's possible he's a Griffith from St. Lucie. So even again, your set of information as BTMI going around doing the genealogies, there is a possibility that Wendell and myself are from the same Griffith clan because both of our Griffith family came from St. Lucie. So you never know where the tour oh, guide comes great. from. <laughs> and I suspect, exactly. I remember vaguely um, Victor mentioning something at one of his tours I attended, some connection with St. Lucie, and I meant to talk to him about it afterwards. You never know. <laughs> yes, I, from my mother's side, I'm of the Griffith tribe as well. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> here, here we are. Here we are. And all through oh this event, God. we are able to make those connections that might have started right here or started in Benin. So Bernice, I'm not sure if you can come online, if I can see if you can come on video and I'll mute yourself so you can say hello to everyone. And then we can continue with our questions and answer any questions. Have we Marika, have there been any questions? Um, I think um, we would like to introduce also Mr. Uh, Luis Diego Madrigal Bermudez, who is here. Mr. Bermudez, if you're hearing, please unmute yourself and say hello, because he is the uh, president of uh, ICEP. Maybe he can introduce him from Costa Rica. Okay, okay, hold a moment. Um, Bernice seems to have finally made it on. Hi, hi, uh, good yes. morning, everyone. Uh, my name morning. is Bernice, and I'm from Benin Republic, that's West Africa. Good, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Costa Rica. I'm so happy to be with you, and um, I have a, a company, insurance company, which is called Tomorrow Trip. So you can find us online on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and, and Twitter too. Yes, and I'm sure Mari Carr will make, take note of that and make sure you link up with the, the relevant association in your part of the of, of uh, we are Africa. very, very happy. Yes, yeah, that's great. Chat box, all the um, information. Pardon? The chat box. We just need the name and uh, email address. Yes, so all go right. ahead and all put right. it I'll in the chat that. box okay. for us. Yes, sorry, All go right. ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bernice. Thank you. thank you. Yeah. Yes, sorry about that. 
I store. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Thank you, Deborah, and nice to meet you, Bernice, too. My name is Diego, Diego Madrigal. Um, I'm part of the uh, Costa Rican Tour Guides Federation. In the case of Costa Rica, we started so, with um, the regulations about tourist guiding since uh, 1979, when we started with, uh, uh, well, all the, all the laws, uh, mainly um, rulers about this. And then after that, in Costa Rica, for more than 15 years, in order to be a tour guide, you have to be certified. Otherwise, you cannot operate in the regular market. Then in 1994, we changed, well, we, we the, the nation, we changed the law, and um, they declared uh, free all the commercial activities. In that order, with that new law, only the, the travel agencies, formal travel agencies, they should have a certified tour guide. Since uh, what happened? Well, everyone who wants to work as a tour guide, um, if they, they want to work in a formal business, in the formal market, they have to be certified. If they don't, uh, they don't have to be certified, but, but they cannot call themselves tour guides. They cannot introduce themselves as a tour guide. Uh, why? Because they are not. So officially in Costa Rica, there is a, a law that says that you cannot use a title if you are not certified in that title. In this particular case, well, in Costa Rica, we have 3,000 tour guides, uh, legal tour guides, at least 1,000 that are not certified tour guides. And well, with the past of the years, we have been changing this and getting into one nice and formal evolution. What I want to tell you with this is in our case, we have uh, 18 tour guides organizations in the whole country. And the first one started in 1981, just to give you an idea about the periods of this uh, evolution. And um, in 2005, we found the Costa Rican Tour Guides Association. We uh, were working with that association for at least uh, 12, 14 years. And in 2013, 14, I don't remember the exact time, we got into the WWFTGA and, and we started with that first step. And since we had been the opportunity to have conversations with members of the worldwide board in this country a couple of times, we had the chance to have someone and doing training here and basically as a speaker, a lecturer in one of our meetings that we have, it was a fantastic experience. I strongly recommend um, the possibility to bring people from the worldwide association to the country when that is in your hands, in your economical possibilities, because we had the chance to um, uh, convince the government to give us some money in order to bring those um, members of the board here. And at the end, we got that result. Finally, in this opportunity, I'm representing the Federation, as I mentioned before, we are 16 organizations in the Federation and of 18 that we are actually. And well, we are trying to get now into the Federation game, but as Federation, because we have one small association that still belongs to the, to the Worldwide Federation. Of course, we, we, are, we are agreed to, to stay with them together too. But in this particular case, we like as a group to be part of it. And from the point of view of my private life, I also work as a, as a trainer. I have been trainer as in tour guides business for what, 20, 20 years approximately. And we have an institution called in Spanish, ISETUR. That means Costa Rican um, Institute of Touristic Education, which is the only one institution in all Central America in five countries around who has to get permission of the government in order to certify tour guides. So of the 3,000 tour guides that we have in this country, um, 800 of them are certified by us. And hold on, hold on. We can't hear. Hello? 
Mr. Bermudez? Okay, yes, yeah. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, you, you said uh, you are, they're certified by you and then we got cut off, you got frozen. Yes, uh, we're in Costa Rica, just give me a second please. Okay, all the tour guys, they should be certified every, pre-certified, excuse me, every three years. So, um, of the 3,000 tour guys that we have in the country, 1,500 of them, they recertify with us. So that means we as institution, we attend one of every two tour guides in the country. So, so we have several atmospheres here, have several um, shirts or hats putting on. So we have the institution, which is in charge of certification for Costa Rica and is the only one company in the whole Central American region dedicated uh, full time to that. We have the Federation, which is basically this huge organization in the country. And we, we all Frozen again. It's frozen. Must be very cold up there. Yeah, okay. Well, that's all what I want to tell you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Deborah? Yes, yes. Sorry. Yes, Marka, I'm going to turn the, the latter part. We are now getting close to the end of our meeting at this point. I'm going to invite our president to give share some information about membership, how we can become members at this point, what the procedure as just an overview of what it takes to become either an individual or association was their preference. I am sure association will be the preference, but just to share that with us and then Marikar will close us off. Um, as a, again, let me just mention here, you can put your email address and so forth in the chat or you can send it directly to me. I think I'm going to put together a form to collect the information and put it on our Facebook um, information as well. Okay, so over to you, President Alushka. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I will touch briefly on membership and then if you allow me, I'd just like to make a, a few other points just in summary from what, what uh, the conversation has led to, if you don't mind. Um, so yes, with regards to membership, we have different categories. We have a full membership, which is an association. We have individual membership, which are individuals in areas where there are no associations, and then affiliate members. Um, I've put the membership email address in the chat. If anyone is interested, you can just mail us at membership at wftga.org and we will then go through the process of what we need from you. Um, if you are an association, we need your constitution and other documents. And as an individual, we need evidence that you are an active tourist guide. Affiliation is a little bit more paperwork and we're quite strict on who we accept with that. Um, and that could be anyone who is tourist guide related, um, but within our constitution as well, which we have as a world federation. So just in touching on what, what some people said, you know, quite a few things resonated. And I think setting up an association is also quite a daunting task. And one of the things you're going to have to face is tourist guides saying, why should I join an association? And I think some of the benefits were touched on by colleagues who spoke about it, including Ricky as well. Um, but something that you need to keep in mind long term that an association can offer is mentorship and legacy and you are in based in countries which have a lot of legacy and as storytellers the tourist guides are the perfect people to keep that and your association can be the method that you do that and mentorship transfer of skills and knowledge so important in an industry where we have tourist guides opting out um, because it's not a sustainable sector in some countries so along with them they take all that knowledge and skills and that's very sad and we want to avoid that so so the mentorship is such plays such a big part of an association as well and accommodating that within it um, and, th and that's important for members coming into it to remember as well and then preparation is key of course you know you need to be prepared with these associations and luckily you have quite a lot of people in your circle who can assist you with this 
um, and setting up it. Um, and all you need is the support of your members. And I think that you have shown that you do have quite passionate tourist guides in your area. So what I just wanted to summarize as well is um, Wendell made the point, you know, we are a village. And I think no one could have put it in better words that we are a village. And as Viola said, enthusiasm and passion equal professionalism. So as the World Federation, I think to sum those sentiments up quite nicely is our logo. I don't know if you've noticed our logo. If you look behind Marika, you will see our hands. Um, and the logo epitomizes exactly where we stand now. Tourist guides are resilient. We need to put our hands together, our friendship and guidance, you know, and especially now during 2020, and let's use it as an opportunity to be supportive and learn from each other in this professional sector that we're in. So I think that, that those points are quite important to, to and, and as tourist guides, uh, you know, we are flexible as human beings and we have the, these um, characteristics as people. So let's use that, let's embrace the change and, and let's see how these challenges lead us into, into positive things, you know, let's, let's use what the opportunities out there as well. So yes, in saying that, um, I'll hand over to Marika and um, just a little, little bit on a lighthearted note, um, you know, us in the WFTGA family, we always celebrate when we have our conventions and we're able to hold our hands and we're able to sing and dance and we hope we can do that quite soon. But in the words of Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie, we are the world is, is our sort of our anthem of the World Federation. Um, and those words seem quite apt at the moment of where we find ourselves in. So, so please Google the words, have a look at it. Um, but yes, WFTJ family are there for you as, a, as, as areas. And let's see how we can grow you and your associations. So Marika, I hand over to you. Yeah, I would like to thank everyone, everyone who have participated in today's forum. I think it is the start of something new, uh, a new beginning. I'm excited. I'm fired up. You know, let's do this. I think uh, with our energy and our enthusiasm, we can really open the world and, um, you know, become one umbrella, one country, one world, you know, just different hands, different places, different languages. And, um, you know, please keep connected. Um, Dora has been such a great work uh, for this beginning. And I want to thank her so much. She, she has really put action into the, into the idea. Imagine we met in 2018. And from 2018 to today, I didn't stop, like she said, you know, just going after her. Deborah, when will you become a member? When will you do this? And she finally did it. And she's great because it takes action. I love people like that who are very action oriented. And that's do And look what it happened. I met so many new people today, you know, from the region and from around the world. It's fantastic how we brought us together into the virtual world. So good job, keep it up. And on behalf of the World Federation, my executive board from uh, President Alushka and our head of training, uh, Viola, and our area representatives, we want to give you a big, you know, really, uh, uh, your heart is so warm and so generous that we have been touched during this hour and a half and we, we love it. And it's so contaminating, more than the virus, you know. We can contaminate the world with joy, warmth, love, and peace. So on behalf of the World Federation, as peace ambassadors, you know, have a great day. Let's move forward with our ideas and hope we can see each other again soon. Thank and, you. And, be and before you, you hop off, can, can, you, can you just hit on the poll, please, and answer the poll questions? The poll is at the bottom of your screen. So if you can just hit on the polls and answer those questions for us, we will appreciate that before you hop off. Thank you so okay. much for doing Thank that. Thank you for inviting Jamaica, everyone. It was really a pleasure. I learned a lot and I'm looking forward for us to put some of these um, into action. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just let, me, just let me end off. Thank you so much for making this a reality. I'm so excited about what the, our future is looking like. It's great to be having not only connections on the island, but connections through the region and across the world as we recognize that we're all one. Thank you so much for making this 
assembly of the New Age Griot a reality. Have a wonderful day.